glory. Call him all those great names that he bears. Call him the I am that I am. The first, the last. The one who speaks a thing and it comes to pass. Open your mouth wide and loud and call him by his name. He's the beginning, he's the end. He's our sustainer, the good shelter, the lifter of our heads, our coming king. Oh, you are exalted again today, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we worship you. I am that I am, you are lifted up. We adore you. Thank you for sustaining us to this point. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for deliverances from evil. Thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for setting us in families by your power. Be lifted up forever. Thank you, Daddy. In Jesus' most precious name, we have worship. We take this song, Allah Bara, you are the mighty God. And you are to be you. You are the glorious one.
Manifest the glory you have ordained for us. That we ask that you cause the heaven to open and breathe on us. Breathe to awaken us. Breathe to quicken us. Breathe to lift us up. Breathe on us to set us free in the name of Jesus. And let your spirit rest upon our life. To generate unusual inspiration. To be what we ought to be for you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus most precious name we pray. Be seated you are blessed. By the time we are done with this month. You will become a miracle yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, the world is in a shape globally and more particularly Nigeria. It's in a shape that to live in it now, you need to put on God who created it. That's why you see sometimes when the Ukraine, Russia was started, people were expecting that there is a big body somewhere like the G7, G20 and other. Who could respond and contain it? But they couldn't. They are just playing politics around destruction of life, property, destinies, nations. And it's a revelation of the limitation of the things we are trusting in. Am I communicating to you? There are certain institutions globally, there are institutions nationally that many of us thought that is our security. And the event that is happening is also showing you that, you know, people that have been put under control not to work among people, some group 
who live in darkness just come and set them free. And you know, you begin to ask, is there any defense for a country? God is just showing you what man is like. That man will be man. God will be what? He will be God. And all these are signals that if you don't live on God, your future is doubtful. Am I communicating today? If you don't resolve to live on the God who created you, everything about the life of man becomes doubtful when God's hand is ignored now. So I'm going to be ministering to you this morning on a message that is titled Operating in the Miraculous. Operating in the miraculous. Operating in the miraculous. Now, listen to me. When we talk about miracle, we have one wrong mentality and perception. Very unfortunate. Even as Christians. Sometimes, we localize miracle to a location. Why God can perform miracle in a location, miracles of God in the New Testament are not localized. Am I communicating? Sometimes we consolidate miracle in a person, maybe gifted for the works and gift of miracles. It's great, but the power of God is not limited to manifestation under the gift alone. I'm going to show you the scriptures. And my burden which I'm carrying before God today is that each of us will wake up. You remember the prodigal son? One day he woke up. The Bible said he came to himself. You will come to yourself and discover who you are and walk on the lane of the glory that you are redeemed to manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. He said he came to himself. He rejected the life he has been living. That day he packed it up with riotous life and walked on the lane of celebration. In the same way today, you, if you, the Lord strike your spirit and you see what the Lord is saying, your story may change. Because in the move of God, you are so critical. What do I say, everybody? In every move of God, you are so critical. Your response to events of life, to what the Lord is saying, to God himself, is so critical to manifestation of his glory and purpose. And I decree today, by our Bible reading where we saw God teaching Ezekiel in a class on how to prophesy, Today, the Lord will teach you. Are you there? I said, the Lord will teach you. The Lord will take you by hand on the lane of his power, on the lane of the revelation of his glory, on the lane of his move, and the grace to yield to him rest upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. So, number one, I want you to know that we are in the perilous time dangerous time. A time that is swallowing the people that are inside it. And so we need the power of God that can override every evil the devil is planning here and there. People that are, to, are, are appointed to manage the nation are the people that are botting the destiny of the nation. When things come like that, you know you need God. The life of anybody is no longer important to people. Money is more important than life. That's why you see people using fellow human beings for ritual. It's a dangerous time. The Bible told us before that you begin to see heights of selfishness, self-centered living, that somebody preferred that your world should die for him to just be reigning in desolation. It's as bad as that. And everything now has become issue of fear. You want to marry, you are afraid. You want to do this, you are afraid. You want to travel, you are afraid. Will you live all your life in fear? When there is God in heaven. So, it is time 
to work in the miraculous. And God will activate you today. He will activate the grace on your life. Anything that is holding you back, as I'm speaking for, because the Bible says God sent his power. You know, I'm sorry. God sends his word and he heal and deliver from destruction. Anything holding you back, the word of God coming today will deliver you from that. And you will stand on your feet in great power, in great fire, manifesting the life of Christ, manifesting the glory of Christ, manifesting the strength of Christ, carrying the fire of the Lord about that people can visibly recognize in the name of Jesus. Now, I start this message by first telling you that your creation is a miracle. So you are yourself that you are alive, that you are created. You are a bundle of miracle. You are an evidence of miracle. Because some people don't believe there is miracle. They don't believe it. But even your existence is a miracle. And I will tell you that. Now, in the book of Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, and we take verse 7. The Bible says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nursery the breath of life. And man became a living being. I have seen sculptures, talented ones. Are you with me? Men in the art field, apply art field, who put mold together to mold things. In my little age, age three, age four, age five, I can still remember I have a grandmother. My partner, grandmother, on my father's side, I lived with her for some time, and she was a pot, cooking pot. Uh, is it manufacturer we call her now? She will go for special clay, and they will bring it with truck to the front of her husband's house, which is our house now. I mean, our traditional family house. And there the woman would begin to put those clay together and make so many pots. That was what she sells. And I'll be watching as a very small boy. When they put it together, they will put it in fire and start burning it. And by the time they bring it out, if you knock it, it will be ringing like a bell. But I've never seen a clay that can speak like man. I've never seen a clay put together that has blood inside it flowing. I've never seen a clay that put on the flesh we put on. But God put clay together in his own case and made you. And the you that is made remain unmanufacturable by any scientific advancement. Everything that makes you up, they talk about millions of cells in, that makes up human body and the, you know, the complicated, complex, unimaginable wisdom of God that fashion us together with nerves and all kinds of sensory movement that in the think of an eye, if somebody pinches you on the hand, the brain interprets it and you feel a pain. It is when we have crisis that people know the miracle of how you lift your leg. I was in an hospital. I wanted to minister to somebody we touch the legs, they can't feel anything. You, they put pain, you can't feel anything. So when they put something and say, yeah, it's a miracle. Because the, the, the way that information is transported is not wired by human knowledge. Amen. When you wake up in the morning and you lift your leg, you don't know it's a miracle. Anytime you just analyze it, I have found that in medical science, Sometimes when they find that they get to terrain, they don't know. You see all of them talking in the corners. And they will leave the patient because they know they are, they are lost. They are what? Somebody? They are lost. Can somebody say, I am a miracle? My package is a miracle. My existence is a miracle. Everything in me is a miracle. And you will manifest it. In the name of Jesus. 
So the first thing I'm trying to let you pick this morning is that even your creation, when you are not redeemed at all, that you exist as a human being, is what? Everybody? It's a miracle. It's a miracle. And you will see that all medical science put together has been studying that miracle. What have they been doing, everybody? Studying all the University of Medical Sciences. They sit by what God has created in the beginning. And all their PhD, all their DSC are built around what Baba put together in you. Clap for yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I decree for a glory to the name of God to your good old age. You will be living a great life. For well, that is how you are wired, you are wired to live. All the forces in the world that terminate people's life on timely that hinder their fulfillment, they shall not be able to prevail against your life. They will not be able to rule your destiny. You will shine forth in that miraculous packaging as a great star in this generation. The problem of nations shall not be able to stop you. I am prophesying on you and it shall be established. In the mighty name of Jesus. So you are a product of miracle. Perfected miracle by the hand of the almighty. By the hand of the almighty. Now, when we now move forward to redemption. At the point of redemption of man. Hey. You are redeemed to become a miracle. That if by adventure, by your, the way you are born, there are interruptions. When you, when you jam the torch of the blood and you accept the covenant of the blood over your life, then you scale to another level in destiny. We are beyond your natural miraculous being. You enter into a combination of the natural and supernatural miraculous living. Are you getting what I'm saying? I was talking about you being a miracle at that natural level by the packaging, your medical constitution, your biological constitution. But when you become redeemed, you enter into another realm which opens you up to supernatural living. Is somebody listening to me today? And when you con combine the natural with supernatural, you meet on a explainable being. Honest people who cannot explain. That's, that's why sometimes the Bible said, you know, he said, when somebody is redeemed, he said they become like a wind. That's the Bible that says it. So. Just like a wind. Who you cannot predict where it's coming from and what? And where it's going. Say that is the people that are redeemed by the Spirit. When you are redeemed by the Spirit, you become a power in yourself, a spirit. That demons cannot track. Maybe you don't know that when you live in the spirit, demon will not be able to analyze your own monitoring spirit. As she's getting closer to picking signals, fire of God blows them off. And they begin to read the wrong thing. Like when you are reading computer, there are some things when you subject computer to analyze it, it shows you error. Why? Because his capacity cannot pick the information. And they know this terrain is not a terrain we can explore. We leave it or we are consumed by it. May the Lord give understanding to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So in redemption, you enter into another level that is beyond the natural miracles we are created. Because in the natural level, when you see what people have done through scientific things, putting together a, an aeroplane, that can carry about 500 people at a time with all kinds of food and load and fly. So, but when now enter into that spiritual level, you enter into another level of glory and grace and wisdom and power. Let's look at the scriptures. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Father, I pray that you grant deep understanding of your counsel to your children in the name of Jesus and let it affect them. Let it affect the way they think. Let it affect the way they see in the name of Jesus. First Corinthians chapter 2, we read from verse 1. 
1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 1. And Paul testified, he said, I and I, brethren, when I came to you, did not come with, the, with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I was with you in weakness. That's as a man. I live among you in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching were not with persuasive words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but what? But what? Somebody? The power of God. So there are two levels he was trying to tell us there. I was there as a weak person like human being, biologically living. At times I prayed. But I decided to switch into the spirit. So that in my living with you, I manifest his power, his spirit, his glory. So that your faith, so that they themselves will not only live in the flesh, in, in human wisdom, in biological strength, but also putting on the dimension of God in life. Amen. So number one, we have seen people that chooses to live supernaturally. Am I communicating? That's Paul giving you testimony that he decided to switch into the spirit. I declare that that capacity be activated in your life. That you will intentionally begin to decide to switch into the spirit in handling many complex situations of life in the name of Jesus. Now listen to me. If Paul and Silas didn't switch into the spirit, you cannot hear that somebody who has just been beaten with terrible rod, they were not beaten with cane. They were beaten with what? Rods. You can't hear somebody who is under that bad shape for no offense of theirs, for false accusation, and they were still singing and praising God. It will only take a man in the spirit who is no longer biologically normal to do that. Because when you react as a biologist, we say he's a man, so you allow him to be a man. But they, they, they switch into the spirit and they manifested miracles. And by that, that switch, they change the story. Amen? They did what? They change the story. Those that help them to the government of that day to beat them suddenly became their nurse. Suddenly started spending his own money to feed them. It is time for you to put on the strength of the almighty and begin to change the narrative of things around your life. It is time for us to wake up and change the narrative of things happening in our nation. And I want to tell you Things are going to change. Because you are here, heaven will change things for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. And the time is now. You must wake up. All the power that have weakened you, weakened your faith, the things you used to believe 10 years ago, you no longer believe them. You are thinking like ordinary being. You have to roll them off. Shake off the dust and wake up. There was a time in the life of David in the book of First Samuel chapter 30. He started thinking like mere man. The man who confronted Goliath in the name of the Lord and brought him down. Got to his camp, found it was burned down. His wife, children, property carried away. And he started singing, crying with others. As somebody who has no anointing on his head. But thank God for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost activated and quickened. What was wrong with him? Don't you have a God in heaven again? And suddenly, the Bible said, David preached to himself. I am not disturbed that should be crying. David preached to himself. Why am I crying? I wasn't crying when I saw Goliath. He, when they say he preached, only God knows the things he spoke to himself. No preacher. He became a preacher to himself. He's my God. Dead who made me a king over the Israelites. 
Why am I crying here? The one who organized my anointing and I was anointed by the first prophet in Israel. Why am I crying? And his, his senses, his spiritual senses came. And he said, can you call me the priest? Amen. Call me the priest. And he asked them, bring out your effort. What is the Lord saying? And by the time the Lord spoke, what they were crying over became a testimony. In that place, that's where you will read that David recovered all. Everything that was taken away, heaven organized his recovery. As I'm speaking to you today, as you listen to the voice of God coming from Jesus Center or that wherever you are, a time of recovery has come for you. Any part of your lifetime that anybody carelessly living union have wasted, the time of recovery of those years have come. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anything taken from your life or taken away from you, the time of recovering them has come. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. He switched into the spirit and he recovered all. That was the Old Testament. We are now in the New Testament under the reign of the Holy Ghost. Under the reign of the Holy Ghost. The spirit of God is calling out from Jesus' center today that you should choose to operate in the miraculous. For that is the stuff you are made of. That's how you are fashioned. That's why you are redeemed. You are not redeemed to be ordinary men on the streets responding to situations with ordinary human sense. You are actually redeemed to be God to your generation. And may you turn out to be one in the name of Jesus. Amen. So what am I sharing with you? I'm sharing with you the vision of God for your life. How you are created, why you are redeemed. In the book of Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. Mark chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. When Jesus was calling his disciples, the Bible said he brought them to himself that they may be with him. He called them, he went to the mountain, called them, and they came to him. When they responded to him, the Bible said he wanted them to be with him so that he may send them forth and carry power to cast out demons, to deal with all the demons destroying life on the earth. Hallelujah. When you are not there, the world will go in for, into further darkness. If you don't manifest, more terrible things will happen. Because there is no hope in the hand of many people that are handing our life up here. The hope and the future Every one of us and this generation is in the hand of people that are redeemed. And when we keep sleeping, then we delay the time. It's time to wake up. So he raised them up. When he was speaking to them, when he was calling them, he said, I am calling you. You have been fishing fishes. I want you to become fishers of what? Fishers of men. Framer of life of people. Direction giver. Light in the midst of darkness. You see the difference? It's a change in profession. Change in what, everybody? From fish fishing to fishing human being. Amen. Look at, so when you are thinking of being a fisherman on rivers, God wants you to become man carrier on the surface of the global hearts. And I declare, somebody catch the fish. I say receive the fish. Whatever is oppressing your understanding today, I command it lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the book of Mark chapter 16, I'm giving you foundation and I will tell you what to do. Foundation. Mark 16 from verse 14. The book of Mark, that's one of the powerful uh, gospel. Mark Chapter 16 and verse 14. You see, later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. Follow this very verse. He appeared to the disciple, the eleven, as they sat. Because at that time, I don't think the other one was there, Thomas. He never knew Oga can come back again. He 
He appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table. And he rebuked their unbelief. Today God is rebuking you. Quit unbelief. Quit your fear. And know that there is God. Still in heaven. As the one in charge of the affairs of the nation. He rebuked their unbelief. Why are you unbelieving? You have lived with me for three and a half years. You know I am not just saint. I am the prophet. He rebuked their unbelief. And hardness of heart. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. I am talking to you by the spirit of the Lord. I am talking to you as God's prophet. Raised and called for a purpose. I am not supposed to be a minister in the order that I am today. I am supposed to be more known as an economist. Are you with me? But he has, it pleased him to raise me up uniquely that I may preach the truth that nobody can resist. And he has sent me to you today wherever you are connected to Jesus' altar. God is asking you to drop on belief. There is, you have a father in heaven. Whatever has been going on in your life that has troubled your heart, your Savior is coming your lane now. In the mighty name of Jesus. You have been weakened. You are thinking, who will marry me? I must marry well. And you are not seeing any signal of any move from heaven or favor coming. You've been struggling with your academics. You can't understand why things aren't working. You know you are a very intelligent person, a first class being. But you are not getting the results of it. And the devil is telling you, you think what you believe is really real. You better accept your faith as it is. Have you been struggling in any corner of your life and that has been, is, is depreciating your trust in God. You are becoming nonchalant about faith again. You are resorting to heaven, help those who does what? Who help themselves. God is rebuking you this morning. Wake up. Come on, don't drop your faith. That is, the, that is your lifeline. That is your only instrument now. For people in government are going to fail more. And you'll find that the only one that is sure for you will be the Almighty. So he rebuked the disciples. So it's not strange for God to rebuke people when he does not see them in the shape they are supposed to be. When he's expecting them to stand in faith, they are standing on nothing. They were behaving like others who never heard with Jesus, who never slept with him. So he rebuked them. And then in verse 15, he said, and he said to them, go! That is a good father. He should have rejected them altogether, but he rebuked them. And said, you, are still, you, can't, you can't dodge this assignment. You are going to do it. Or you rise up and do what? Everybody, are, are you hearing me? You cannot, you have no option. You must manifest. You have no option. You must show forth. Can somebody say, I have no option. In my life, the name of the Lord must be glorified not may be glorified must be glorified is somebody saying it i have no option i have accepted the covenant and the name of the lord shall be glorified in my life can you say it better and more boldly and more loudly i have no option i have accepted the covenant and it's a sure covenant and the name of the Lord shall be glorified in my life. The name of the Lord shall be greatly praised in my life in the name of Jesus. So when Jesus called and said, come on, rise up. You have been appointed for that purpose and you can't dodge it. Go into all the world, every corner. Every corner, villages, cities, roadside, go there. Preach the gospel to every creature, anybody. Preach to them on hospital bed. 
the cripple, the, those that are blind, begin to speak because that is where their life is. And he who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. He gave you mandate to communicate his life, his power, his word, discharge the light, and leave the rest to those you are speaking to. Amen. Leave the rest to me, God, and them. And look at it. He didn't just send you forth like a vegetable. Verse 17. He said, and these signs, we follow those who what? Who believe. In my name, what will happen first? They will cast out demons. How many of you have seen demons with your eyes before? I, am, I, am just, I just want you to imagine how great you become when you are casting out invisible forces. When you can communicate with your mouth and communicate to invisible forces. Forces that are troubling people. And you say, stranger, hear my voice. In the name of the Lord. Come on, move out of the place. And they obey you. That's the realm. That's the vision of God for your life. He won't communicate it if he meant, if he meant anything less than, than that. And many of us are not training ourselves. You stand in your room, worship God, and begin to learn how to communicate, how to declare, how to prophesy against forces of darkness that are troubling your nation, troubling your family, even troubling your life. Our response is fear. Sometimes our response is crying. What will weeping do? In the Bible, even God of heaven had to speak for things to happen. He did it. If he closed his mouth, no light will come. Let there be what? Let there be light. Light came. Even the God of heaven had to speak the Almighty. He can just stand like this and be looking. He declared what he wanted. And they were nature was responding. Here, sons were responding to him. When Joshua wanted son to stand still, he had to speak to him. Stand still in the valley of Ajalon. And son heard the voice of the prophet of God. And stayed. Anywhere you can speak, nothing will happen. Actually, in many circumstances that we face in life, Everyone is expecting you to stand forth. They say there is coming. I begin to say, come on, in the name of Jesus, I address you. Cease. Stop. Look at our Bible reading. God was telling a prophet. He was a prophet. But he knew he didn't know what he, he carries. That said, oh yeah, speak to the bone. Tell them to come together. He said, what did you see? He said, I saw bones that are very what? That are very what? Everybody? Ezekiel 37 says, some bones that are very dry. That is a very, very terribly hopeless situation. Situation that the brain of man will say, and say, it's finished. When people die, doctors say, we are sorry. They will put their rug on their head and, and you see them walking away. Did not take care of the rest. <laughs> it is usually the nurse we meet in the hospital when you see people crying. The doctors have disappeared. One they say, sorry, sorry. They, they, they are gone. It's the note that begins to say, okay, I want to you could here. He has to be explaining. You carry the hand, the hand drop. Hopeless situation where human wisdom cannot speak. But Jesus didn't confront somebody who just died. Am I communicating? He confronted somebody that is here. A guy, he has died several days. He has died. Why didn't you come on time? When he was sick, he's better. We know you are the healer. For by your sight, you are healed. But now he's dead. Which name do we call you? He then said, I am the resurrection. What? A lie. Can somebody put your hand together for Jesus? <laughs> they didn't know the name to call Jesus. He told them, now at this point, my name is the resurrection. What? And lie. So, calm down, Martha and Mary. Your brother is going to live again. And he goes and say, thank you, Father. Look at that simple prayer. Thank you, Father. Ah, may you enter the miraculous realm. May the hand of God for miracle rest upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
Say, thank you, Father, for whenever I call, you always what? You always answer. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus responded from the grave and walked out. Now, today, in the name of Jesus, I prophetically speak from this great altar to your life. Anything that has been adjourned dead in your life, I command, come back to life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever thing you are managing in life, I declare they turn to abundance. As water turned to wine, I declare a turning by the Spirit of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare a turning by the Spirit of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. So he told them here that you are going to cast out demons. That's your destiny. Demon caster. If someone says, they say, you don't know me, I am a demon caster. Why? Because greater than he, he that is greater than the world is where? It's inside of me. Amen. They say, how do you know it? You must have something to say from the word of God. Greater is he. That's what? That is in me than he that is in the world. And I can do all things through who? Through Christ who strengthens me. And have you forgotten he gave unto you what? Power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpion and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Listen to me, you have been wasting the power of God. Heaven is rebuking you today. Stop wasting God's power. Power of God becomes real. You come to physical and physical knowledge that you carry them when you begin to exercise them. In 1991, after my master's program, I was looking for jobs, so I was free. So I went and joined a prayer group that I started leading. And as you are praying, you know, I've never seen much manifestation than just praying, seeking the face of God, and ministering to that point. In the university, we pray for people. But what I'm saying is, the miraculous dimension was not so evident and powerful. And as we started, they started bringing all kinds of strange, complex problems. And as I lay my hand, one day I lay hand on somebody, he then became like electrocuted. Even me, I was there. Ah, what have I done to him? You understand? Like the way God was teaching Ezekiel. Became like somebody who is electrocuted. Just, oh, come, come back. Eh? I be magician, can cause all my enemy. What is happening? But the fire of God moved through. A lady said, My day to deliver is due, but the baby is not coming. And we did our Wednesday prayer meeting at 44 Ibadan Road. And she came and knelt down. As I lay my hand, as she rose up, the thing started, it had to face us, to straight. Amen. He had to do what? Somebody? face hospital. And we had, I had delivered the person complaining. We didn't see, what do they call it now? The baby is not, uh, lab, uh, is not laboring. Anointing came, bam. <laughs> Labor got imported. And it moved. Amen. Now, until you begin to speak to situations, you won't know what you carry. That's where I'm going. As long as you keep quiet, the anointing will keep quiet inside of you. The fire of God will keep quiet inside of you. The grace of God will be sleeping inside of you. But until the day you wake up, sometimes when you want to wake up, the devil will tell you, who are you? What do you want to say? Then you will remember the word of God that says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. If you can't remember that, that's how you will be silent. But when you are filled with the word of God and you respond to every check from the devil, you begin to see the manifestation. Because you are not, it, it is the spirit of God that will perform it. God is just looking for you to cooperate and stand in faith. 
standing in God's power. That's, you know, there is this common verse that we don't understand. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. He says, finally my brethren, be strong in what? In the Lord and in the power of what? Of his mind. Anytime you are speaking, you are not speaking your power. In whose power are you speaking? In the power of God's might. In the power, every time you remember that, it gives you confidence to speak to any. I have spoken to dead people before. I have lied on dead bodies before, asking them to rise. You, you are not using your power, and anytime you minister, this is the conclusion of the matter. If you pray for somebody, nothing happens, leave him and God alone. You are cuckoo, not the healer. Who is the healer? He's the Almighty. But until you begin to exercise your faith, no miracle will ever be witnessed. You have to pick this. You have to know it. Baba said you will take up serpents. Those are powerful illustrations. You take up serpents. But he said it. You will take up serpents. And if you drink any deadly thing, what will happen? It won't hurt you. What is he saying? You are, dwell, you are to dwell in the realm of the supernatural where naturally manufactured poison can never work again. In the realm of power that neutralizes natural phenomenon, that changes situations. Now somebody received the vision. Somebody received the strength of God. Somebody received the light into your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions. And over all, I will say over some power. You say over what? All the powers of what? Of the enemies. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. You see consistency of the scripture. Mark told you, you drink poison, it won't affect you. But say, and nothing shall, no thing shall hurt you. You will drive on the road, you won't have accident. That's what he said. Amen. They say there is kidnapper there where you are going because there is someone ordering your step. You won't run into their trap. You know, when he was giving the illustration in the Old Testament in the book of Psalm 91, you may not know, he said, only with your eyes. It's a realm. Everywhere in the Bible, you see consistency. Only with your eyes will you behold and see the reward of what? Of the wicked. But it shall not what? Come near you. Ah! Let somebody say hallelujah! Amen. That is your portion. Only with your eyes. Only with your eyes. You will see the reward of the wicked. You will see the activity of the wicked. But it shall not come near you. That means there is a determined position of God concerning your life. Whatever evil is going on on the head. Whatever wickedness people are perpetrating. It's like telling you your own destiny is secured. Why? Because God of heaven alone, in God of heaven himself, is the one watching over your life. Is somebody in the house? Do you believe what God is saying? Can you put off unbelief? Put off your unbelief. Put off your spiritual frailty. Put on the strength of God. And said, I have a God in heaven. I serve a God who never fails. And can never fail forevermore. He can never, never fail. Hey, he can never, never fail. Hallelujah. He can never, never fail. Jesus, they say for He can never fail. He can never, never fail. Hallelujah. He can never, never fail. Ah, he can never, never fail. Jesus be saved forever. One more time. He can never, never fail. Amen. He can never, never fail. Ah, ah. He can never, never fail. 
Jesus, Jesus he said forever. forever. Amen. Be seated. You are blessed. Why? Now, look at Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. And you look at verse 5. Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 5. The Bible says, I'm from Jesus Christ, the faithful. Hallelujah. Revelation 1 5. I'm from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the head. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests. To his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and what? And ever. Now, the word I want you to pick there is that he has made us king and what? And priest. Let someone say, I'm a king. Shall a woman say, I'm a queen. I'm a priest unto the Lord. The job of the priest is to dispense the power of God. Dispend the glory of God. They are called to make known the things of God. To confirm things that are natural. So you are a priest. You are a king on the head. Won't you reign? When are you going to start? Amen. Also in Revelation 5.10. Revelation chapter 5. And verse 10. Revelation 5 and verse 10. The scripture says, and have made us kings and priests to who? To her God. And what will happen? If you are a king and priest, what will happen? And we shall reign. Where? We are to exercise authority here. Check the evil going on. We are to silence the power of darkness. We are to declare exposed all those walking in darkness. We can command that fire of God should fall and burn them. It happened on Munkame. It can happen again. If God finds someone. Look at Elijah. Let's say, Father, hear me now. Let them know you are the only one that is alive. And they call fire down. If it was just looking like don't do to the situation, the name of the Lord would have been reproached. The 450 prophet would have been reigning. As you see them doing what they like on the streets. You go to palaces, you see evil that you have forgotten being raised up again all over the place. Because the church has become neutral. We are pursuing the word rather than pursuing the glory that can command the blessings of God on our life. Can somebody say in the name of Jesus, I will arise and shine now. I'm not going to sleep again. I shake off spirit of unbelief from my life. I put on the strength of God today. Whatever my age, I stand for the Lord. I stand for the Lord. God does not move by age. He moves by his spirit. I put on the strength of God from today and I reign in life. Amen. Hallelujah. You then ask me, Pastor, I've been born again 10 years. Why can't this happen to me? It cannot happen because you are not growing. It cannot happen because you are not stalking your life with God. You are not stalking your life with his words. It cannot happen because you are not, you are not staying under his fire. You have no altar. Your, your spiritual closet is empty. You know what happened when you are praying now? Your spirit goes away and you want to pray, you take your phone, have it? And you begin to scroll for two hours. Then you remember, I wanted to pray, but time has gone. You go. How will it happen? Normally when a child of God is coming out in the morning, he must be coming with a fresh power and glory of God. Am I communicating? From the oven of your altar and devotion. He must be coming with another fresh God does not rely on anointing of yesterday. 
you must be fresh every what? Every day. Updated morning by morning. Uh, go and read the book of men that you know they are who God made great. People like energy again. They will wake up in the morning very early and they will begin to speak in mysteries of new language and tongue for three hours. What will they confront that we know that we know yield to them? I'm talking about to you now about the power of the word of God. Jesus himself, your redeemer, confronted the fig tree and spoke to it. That's Mark 11. Mark chapter 11. He spoke to the fig tree. And when he spoke to the fig tree, what happened? Everybody, the Bible said they went away. Immediately he spoke. If he was looking by sight, will he believe his word? Hey, damn it, no. He spoke to the fig tree and the fig tree dry immediately. That's what the Bible says. Hey, damn it, no. It didn't happen immediately. But he believed what he said and walked away. When they were coming back, he was not the one giving evidence. What not the disciples said? Look at this tree you cursed. He, the Bible said at that time it had become dry from the leaf to what? To the root. Sometimes when you speak, you want God to do magic. You don't want to give him time to, to work out his miracle. And so immediately you don't see what you are saying, you begin to believe nothing has happened. And then you begin to think of alternative. Instead of taking steps that follow up on what you have said, you begin to think back and nullify altogether what you have said. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Many times when you speak, give God his time to do it. Let him work it. Are you the worker of miracle? He's the miracle worker. Miracle worker. He's the miracle worker. What he commanded you so, he said, decree a thing. Abby, what will happen? It shall be established. Jesus did not do any other thing. He also was speaking. What he did is what I'm teaching you to do. And what the Bible commands. And until you wake up, throw away unbelief, if it's yourself, that if you, you can be speaking to your nation, you can be speaking to your family, you can be speaking to somebody, you can be speaking to somebody on the people, but there may be time to speak to yourself too. You speak to your brain, command it to, to come alive. And be excellent. You speak to your bodily system. You lay your hand on yourself and prophetically address. You wake up tomorrow. You say it. You wake up. But sometimes when you speak, you have not seen the physical manifestation. Then you begin to believe God cannot do it. And that is where we are defeated. That is where miracles are aborted. Am I communicating to you? In our Bible study for Thursday, I told people only God knows the number of miracles that would have happened in our life. That we are by our careless oppression which God aborted, nullified. Because we don't walk through. Look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel did not, did he prophesy only once? He was telling him from stage to stage. He was asking him, prophesy to it. Let it come together. Oh yeah, prophesy. Let the wind come. Prophesy. Let bread come. He kept instructing and from stage to stage, the changes were taking place. Now receive understanding spirit. I declare your spirit man activated to understand the things of God that I'm communicating to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Most of the great miracles don't happen by abracadabra. They happen by faith. They happen by what? By faith. You just declare it and you refuse to believe any other thing else is going to do it. You come back again as if you didn't know you said it, you declare it again. You wake up to a man and say, Raku, tell you about it. I speak to you, my bodiless system. Receive life. I speak to you, my destiny. Manifest. I speak to the four walls of the earth. East, west, south, north. Bring forth. So, so, so in my life. You wake up tomorrow, you say the same thing. I am telling you today, this month you are going to become a miracle. If like a child, because the Bible says anybody that does not accept the kingdom like a child cannot what? Can't enter. If you believe like a child, speak to your farm, speak to your business. Every day begin to prophesy what you want them to turn out to be. Speak to that your child. Speak to the child. Sometimes you take anointing or you spray it on that baby and speak to that baby. 
You sound in the spirit of God. But when all the night you can be searching the skill, what does the scripture have to say about this matter? Are you being afflicted by your spouse? Or you go to the Bible and go to God and say, now from now I compel my spouse to begin to show me favor instead of affliction. All the struggle, all the human rights, all the gender thing, you see that there is a power of God that does better job than gender theory. Gender theory will tell you, pack away from your house, from your wealthy place. God will tell you, here, yeah, miracle will happen. That's the difference between God and human philosophy. Human philosophy makes you to pack and lose your blessing, lose your glory, lose your, your location, lose your destiny. That was what taught Abraham to lose his wife to the king in Egypt. Anytime a man is operating in sense, there is a limit to the success of that person. And you are a child of God, not for fun, but for, to manifest the greatness of God. Can somebody say from today, I accept that there is a God of miracle, and I receive grace to walk on the lane of the miraculous in the name of Jesus. So it shall be for you. Now listen to this small point. Number one, to walk, to operate in the miraculous, you must learn to listen to the voice of God. No, there are people that make pronouncement in the flesh. I will show you now that there is a God. In every, you know, in every, he wants to prove himself that he has power. When you want to show people you have power, you are going to lose the battle. Because God is not a man that you can begin to use his power to show ego. There are people like that that use God's power. They want to use it to demonstrate their ego. God doesn't respect such disposition. So many times when you are prophesying, when you are speaking to a situation, it must be by the inspiration of the Spirit of God. That's what I'm saying there. Learn to listen to the Lord's voice. What do I say to this? And then sometimes it dictates how you address that thing. You see that, you see, God was telling you, I say so, so. And he will just say what God said he should say. He was saying it, he was saying it. He was saying it. Sometimes you can draw your inspiration from the scriptures. The scripture says this. Therefore, it must be. Because the word of God is yea and what? And amen. Is somebody hearing me? In this laboratory, you will not get out of this church the same person today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So what I'm teaching you is we need to come down to carefully study the word and be under the open of God's fire. Learn, cultivate the habit of listening to God. What does God ask to tell me for today? You want to go out. You just kneel down. You have prayed. You have read the Bible. Then you kneel down before him quietly. Listening to him. But adventure, he has something to tell you about the day. But many of us are joining the same of spring morning. You are gone. Never listening to his voice. The voice of God is full of power. It sounds like the noise of many waters. And when you have the voice of God, you have the miracles. Amen. May the Lord help you. And what, in essence, am I teaching you? God wants you to submit, to be taught. Submit for God to teach you. When you face complex situation, submit, calm down. In faith. Fear is not, the Bible says God has not given you the spirit of what? Of fear, but of, of power and of sound mind. Calm down and learn to submit. Daddy, what do I do with this situation? How do I approach it? And as you begin to speak, I have seen a place where I should be stranded. God raising people to come and rescue me. One day I asked, why did this vehicle stop here? He stopped where the answer is. Why? Because he has said he will never allow you to be tempted. Every problem that ever come across you, remember this scripture. Any problem brought before, that means you are in control of it. You can handle it. Said, I won't tempt you more than you can take. Can God lie? Can God lie? But when you are not responding, let, draw your strength from the word of God. And that's why you must know the word of God very well, understand what God is telling you 
To be able to walk in the miraculous, you must understand what God is saying. You must understand the word of God to be able to walk in the miraculous. Because the word of God is a bundle of the will of God. Amen. Amen, somebody. So, submit to God. That's why the Bible commands us, submit to the Lord and he will lift you up. Humble yourself and submit. Put your knowledge down. Put on the knowledge of God. To be able to undo the complex matter of life. When people are running, you sit and say, Daddy, do I run with them? Or do I stay? That's a child of God. That's somebody who wants to walk. But if you are moving by the signal of people, you are going to miss it with them. There was an incident in Lagos some decades ago. The bomb that had been kept in the cantonment in the Kedja. Something went wrong and they were exploding. Bow, bow, bow. And people were running. There was a terrible canal around the other day, and people were running through it. The same route, they were running. They were jumping to the canal. And the canal is so deep. They were jumping, and all of them, by the second day, when they were picking the dead body, the dead body went on like that in their hundreds. They were jumping on one another inside. There was no soil because the place is gone deep. But the church is someone they can run, run over. As they were jumping, they were going inside it. Inside it. And generations of people died like that. Just by ordinary noise. Do you know that that bomb didn't kill anybody? But people ran into death. Because they were responding by human sense to complex noise. Roaring lion. We never had that the blast kill a person. But by running... When nothing was chasing them, multitude died. Don't run to death. Stay in the hand of God where your destiny is secure. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. And remember, I've said, listen to the voice of the Spirit. I've told you to calm down. I've told you to submit, to be taught by God. For God to guide you what to do. And I'm adding that you should be strong in faith to speak. That's the next instruction. Be strong in faith to do what? To speak. Kill of faith. What do you want God to do for you? God had to tell us, what do you want me to do for you? Have mercy. What do you want me to do? Describe what you want. I want us, man. Some of you are always very shy to tell what you want. We carry our ego even when you need something that is, I want us, man. Us, man, the Baba Fumil husband, give me good husband. Decorate my life. Show me favor to us. You have shown millions of people. To say that become a problem. Your mouth is too great. Your ego capture you. You don't want to tell people you need husband. You don't want to tell them you need, you need wife. And here we'll be multiplying. Gradually you'll be getting to threshold that are dangerous for living. Why? We are shy. We wear our ego. I mean, to be saying that, I am still young. I am still young. I am then you become old. May the Lord give understanding. What you want is what you ask. That's why I say ask, seek, knock, and it will be open to you. Simple instruction. You should never consider anything too simple, anything too complex that you cannot ask your father, who is more complex than anything, who is greater than the greatest thing in the world. Amen. So be strong in faith. Get this clear. Be strong in faith to speak. Speak. One of the things that woke me up as a part of when you have somebody to pray. Even me, human being, I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. What are you saying? Have you seen a soldier giving command before and doing like this? Yeah, man! You, you, when you hear it, sometimes you want to shit in your pants. That's socialized instruction. And you are a king, you are a priest, you should not be afraid to speak. Amen. Your platform to reign in life is created by your unction. What did I say? Do you hear me? Your platform to reign in life, your platform to rule in life is created by your unction. Anytime you don't say a thing, nothing happens. Actually, every great thing that happens in the world, when you are writing it down, until you communicate it out, nobody implements it. And I want to tell you, angels are waiting for instruction. Heaven is waiting for your instruction. You have been wasting their energy. They have been waiting on you. 
And I decree, may you wake up now. May you begin to see the things you should call God on. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Job 22 verse 28 says, Decree 18. Decree 18. Legislate 18. Declare 18. Speak 18. It shall be established. I use different words for you to, for it to be drummed into your spirit. Decree 18. God is not instructing three to speak. He's instructing men. Instructing the redeemed. He's instructing his children to decree 18. Begin to decree the impossible. If you want to see the impossible becoming possible, begin to confront them with hot declaration of faith. Nikatalaba, you this economy yield in my favor. You wake up tomorrow, you tell it yield. You soon see a wind blowing and you are positioned gloriously. And people are complaining by your side, you are enjoying your life. The mystery of greatness of a child of God. Is in the power of his function. I am still repeating myself. Anytime you can't speak, you can't get. Because his command is that you should ask. Don't ever be shy. Keep repeating it. This is not faint repetition. You are declaring with determination and faith. This is faith repetition. Say it must happen because it is of faith. But there are some theological teaching that has wired some brains. Why should we be asking again and again? Ask again and again. Tell him. He's the one who said you should never faint. He said you should pray until something happens. He spoke this parable unto them. Luke 18, 1. That men ought always to pray and not faint. Amen. Keep praying it. One prayer point. And I tell people in my definition of prayer and teaching. That when you are praying on a matter, you have not prayed until you receive your answer. Jesus kept praying. He repeated himself several times. Let this cup go. Is it not in your Bible? Let this cup go. The God tell him he's repeating. You are repeating too much. Jesus, keep quiet. And he prayed. It. And heaven decided to send the angel to minister to him and say, This is my will for you. Don't dodge it. You won't be a savior. If you don't carry the cross and he receives strength. And he came and said, Daddy, your will be what? He received strength. Everyone had to strengthen him. Nobody wants to die now. Amen. And God strengthened him and he carried the cross successfully to become your savior today. Even assignment of destiny many times are difficult to carry. Am I communicating? Except you pray well. That's why people are missing their destiny cheaply. It takes the grace of God. How will it be easy for Sister Gloria to say yes to a man who has no job, physically speaking? It will take a strength, a revelation knowledge. And the parent will say, Can you say, Oh, Lord, you say, You don't say, Oh, me. I be a party. You don't say, Oh, Lord, Lord, call me. Today they are celebrating. But I knew that answer I was given were given by the strength of God inside of her. She wasn't looking for a car. She was not looking for a, a I only God know the type of shoe the brother was wearing about them. And she said yes to it. To say yes to glory and to destiny. Amen. Can somebody say from today, I draw strength from the Almighty to walk in the strength and in the might of God, to walk in the realm of revelation and spirit of understanding that comes by the Holy Spirit to resolve all the complex issues of life that may come my way in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I instruct you today, don't forget as I'm rounding off, I have told you, you don't know what to say. Say what the Bible says about your situation. If you don't know what to say about it, what does the Bible say? Somebody will say, okay, daddy, you say I should say what the Bible says. I say, I'm, I'm looking for a spouse. What does the Bible say about spouse? The Bible says no one will want his mates. You see your own Bible? Say none will be we want his what? His mate. There is nothing you are looking for in the Bible that is not there. If you are denied of success, you tell God. The Bible says you will give me not just success, but what? 
good success. Now I receive anointing for good success. Anointing for good success. Because it's the Bible. Anointing for, you said it. Anointing for good success. Amen. If you don't know what to say, what do I say? You should say this morning. Say what the Bible say. And you get the result of God's power in your life. In your head. In your business. On your family life. Some of you look at your family, you just hate them. You can't understand why your family should be there. Begin to prophesy what you want to begin to see. Begin to speak to them. Ask God's breath to blow over them. But before you know what is happening, glory will appear. And finally, when you speak, expect wonders. Uh, is somebody there? When you speak, what should happen? Expect what? That's my last point this morning. Expect what? Everybody? Expect wonders. Rise up and say, I am expecting wonders. Now, when you are expecting the wonder of God, that means you believe your pronouncement. You believe your prayers. But when you pray and you are doing something else, not expecting any miracle, you have finished everything. You have nullified your steps. Or you go back to your unbelief after you have prayed, after you have spoken. You'll be expecting wonders. And you'll be confessing wonders. Expect wonders. You know, move of God comes stage by stage in faith. Stage by stage in faith. Tell the bone to come together. And the bone started coming. Tell the bone to put on flesh. They started putting on flesh. Don't you tell them that the breath of God should come into them? Stage by stage. Don't model up matters. Be clean thinking person with the Holy Ghost. What I say it should be? Be clean thinking person with the Holy Ghost. You must commit your thought on the spiritual life. And you are thinking with God. You are thinking with God. Don't think with the confused generation. As I was reading another job, the devil gave some people his tight. You see them talking about tight. As if their brain has been turned upside down. When he said that we lay to God, I want bandit to fake my waku tight in one sorrow. They are forgotten that the Bible they are reading, the canonicity of this, the people who canonize the Bible are the people who gave us tight principle. Many don't know the Bible. If you read the Bible today, the issue of the Bible was enforced among the Roman Catholic people for us to pay it. Even in the New Testament. And they are the one who put the Bible together. What should be in the Bible? How Genesis should look like? How Exodus should look like? You are now reading the Bible they put together against them that they don't have brain. One of the trouble of your generation is that you are looking for wisdom beyond the wisdom of God. And what will you get? If I open the New Testament to you, you must be bringing 100% of your money to the church. Because in the New Testament, it's 100%. Uh, don't, maybe you don't know that. Maybe you don't know that. He said them to go and sell all their property and do what? Bring 10% of it. He told them to bring 8% of it. Everything. But they, raised by God, decided that let's give them the minimum. Are you with me? Which will be easy for them to walk with God in the life. They are not under. When you are paying tight, are you under course? Are you paying it with guilt? Me, I've been paying tight since I am a student. When they are giving me, my mother like, will give me five naira. I will pay tight inside it. I was paying it with joy. They now started saying, you put it under guilt, under course. And it, have I preached course to you here about tight here yeah, before? They are thinking because the devil has turned upside down their brain. Religion is if you are practicing religion, we are we are practicing life of Christ, yeah. Not religion. No, actually, we are decided that you should not make a foul in this church, Abby. So that you don't come to church, you're unable to pay it, and you go back crushed. The, the debate has been there. When we were in school, there was some group of boys who were talking about that. Oh, you must still raise it. And we found that in the Bible, it is the easiest thing for you to apply. Go in the old testament. Everything you bring it, amen. You, well, I mean, if you want to be, you don't want tight, you don't want what is simple, and you do what is more complex. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And don't give to God and let's see what the result will look like. Don't give to Him. I told people 
when we wanted to buy a mission when I was in gospel I said everybody here don't lose your sleep why? because the house we want to buy there, there was no salary we are handing that can explain it and I told her, don't lose your sleep. God said, I should declare we are going to buy a house. Even me that I'm declaring, I don't know how we will buy it. So don't lose your sleep. If God asks you to give, give. If you can't give, hold it and be hitting your back. Within three months, we bought it. It's sparkling there today. Perhaps you see it there. It's sparkling there. When you don't give, as you are sleeping and waking up, you will soon see that the job is done. Because that is God for you. He only counts on you when you are ready. When you are not there, he substitutes it. I'm showing you scripture. I'm not teaching about giving this money. I am speaking to you that don't let the devil give you a job that does not belong to you. The real job now is that our generation needs people who can work in what? In the miraculous. What do you work? What, in what do you work, everybody? The miraculous. That's the job, the tithe. I, if you can't pay tithe, throw your tithe away. Just work in the miraculous and let the world know that there is Jesus in heaven. That's the work. Can you cry to God and say, Father, I am ready for my time of manifestation. I am ready to rule. I am ready to reign. I am a king. I'm a priest. Are you there? I am a king. I am a priest of the living God. I am ready to reign. I am ready to reign in life, in destiny in Nigeria and globally my star shall not be covered I will shine forth I arise today to shine forth as a great star in the hand of the Lord in the name of Jesus I arise today in the name of the Lord of hosts who raised up David in Israel I arise today in the name of the Lord of hosts who raised up Daniel in Babylon. Is somebody in the house? I arise today in the name of the Lord, the God of Joseph in Egypt. I shine forth as a star that cannot be covered in the power of God, in the fire of God, in the life of God, in the glory of God. In the name of Jesus. I want you to begin to declare what you want to be now. Begin to declare. I've guided you. I have guided you. We have not started yet. Oh, I have guided you. I have guided you. There is a God of Daniel. There is a God of David. There is a God of Joseph in Egypt. A single person turned the whole of Egypt around. And Egypt became a unique nation in the account of the scripture. You must manifest. The glory of the Lord must be revealed in your life. All the hanging things that are weighing you down, they must go on fire today. La kachore mashalaba renegebo masakata la kachara balama la gaba roneke chele balama la kachara balama la gaba baba baba can you say I shake off every strange weight I shake off every strange weight on my life every strange weight on my life I shake off I silence every strange noise over my life I silence every strange noise noise of unbelief, noise of death. You are silenced. You are silenced. You are silenced. Are you prophetically speaking? I declare the yoke of financial hardship broken over my life by the hand of the Lord in the house today. I speak to my door. Open. 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 I want to enter into the glory that is ordained for me. I stand by the one who holds the key of David, the first and the last, the one who speaks a thing and it comes to pass. Hold oh, door, close against me. I say, 
Open now. You have a master degree. You are working for 25,000 naira per month. Tell the door of your job to open now. La kata la bara malaga bara malaga ba 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 reke chele ke ke rebo saka la bara malaga ba le kata la bara malaga ba 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 re ne ke boro bolo ke boro bolo ke boro bolo ke bo la kata pori mashata la gaba le kata mori malanda gabale. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Are you alive? Are you in tune? Eh? Now we are going to another level of prayer. You are prayed about things you know. You are going to pray about things you don't know. You are going to declare prophetically. You are a king. You are a priest. What you say, God will do. But every dimension of my life that I don't even know now come into manifestation come into manifestation. Every dimensions of my life that I'm not aware of. Every great dimensions of my life that are there, follow, just there. I'm not even aware. I'm not stretching anything about it. I command you unveiled by the power of the Holy Ghost now. Are you speaking seriously? Are you speaking boldly to the Lord? Reke tele bakaruma sandalaba. Rene geboro molo geboro molo geboro. Every great dimension of my life that I'm not even aware of. Oh, I declare you unveiled now. Be unveiled. Be unveiled. La kata la gababa. Come into manifestation. Be activated now. Into my consciousness and sensitivity. La kata rabalama, rene ke 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 re boro bolo go boro bolo go boro bolo go boro bolo. Be unveiled now, rika shapata. La kata rabalama, rene ke le ke 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 ke. Roli kato masaka, la garu paliaba, rene ke porima, sali katanda, no ke chelia, masaka ria balama. Hey. Ruse keleba, madagabala malagabara balaba. I step into the reality of all those things that are ordained for my life, that are yet to manifest. I I call you into reality. I call you into manifestation. In the mighty name of Jesus, la kreto masanda balaba. Ha, ruse keleba malagabala balaba. Rola kata paruma sakata laba Rene gaila homa sakanda laba Nenda goria malaba la malaga baba baba Re kaila tomasila kata Rone hake toloba Rulia sakambo limaha Re In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I am speaking to you this morning on that heavy grace of God and his wisdom. Listen very carefully. The day Lot was departing from Abraham, Lot was sorry for Abraham by the time he picked where he wanted. They look at the best location by human eyes and picked there and went. I know we look at him old school. I'll deal with him. And they said the place left was arid, Abbey, rocky. No scientific prospect of prosperity. But immediately the Lord departed. The Bible said God came and said, Look, Abraham, look at the north, look at the west, look at the east, look at everywhere. Now, real living begin for you now. Restful living begin for you now. Peaceful living begin for you now. Abundance begin for you now. Abraham, oh, yeah, set you and begin to move forward. And Abraham started multiplying and moving forward. And that became the permanent blessing. 
you are going to decree anything that needs to depart from my life. I speak to you now. I'm not. Find your way out of my home, of my life, of my business, of my career. Anything that needs to go for things to work for me. Oh, your out. I command you in the name of Jesus. In the invisible realm, in the physical realm, oh, you tormentor of destiny, I revoke your license over my life. I revoke your license over my life. Every contrary handwriting against my life, I wipe you off by the blood of Jesus. I wipe you off by the blood of Jesus. I wipe you off by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 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 There are certain prevailing conditions in your life that are troubling your faith. Are you hearing me? Sometimes you find that you are becoming weak physically. Your head's failing. And it's troubling your faith. You have been looking for a baby. It's not coming. It's troubling your faith. You have been trying to get a job. The job is not coming. It's troubling your faith. You are going to cause everything troubling your faith today. Jesus caused the fig tree. He tried to the root. Say, everything troubling my faith. You know their names in your life. Say, speak to them and say, I cause you in my life. I break your power in my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Benny, in your family life, on your children, anything troubling your faith. You love the Lord, but something is troubling your faith. Oh, yeah, one segment. Cause them. Jesus caused the victory, and the victory dry. Speak to them. Say, dry. You this sickness, dry. I cause you in my life. I have been redeemed by the blood. My father is the great physician. I've been healed by his strife. The chastisement of my peace has been laid upon him. I walk out of your of your affliction today in the name of Jesus. Who are that mountain before the rubber? Become play, become play before me. You are leveled out of my way. Kalibasa kata la balama la gaba baba. Re kata la gaba rabala mala gaba baba baba. Rose kata la ba. Re ni akata la balama. Re mala gaba la mala gaba baba baba. Ro masaka la bara mala gaba baba baba. Ro mala gaba la mala kata la balama. Re ni aketele bakuri masanda la ba. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Musician, are you there? I can see everything. Ninu ayemi. Ori shemi. I can see everything. Do you believe it? 
Amen. I can see everything. Turning around. Turning around. I can see everything. Turning around. Turning Turning around. I can see everything. Hallelujah. From this service of today, I receive speed in destiny. Now, listen very carefully. You will see that the devil is working to delay destiny now. Tying people down helplessly in one spot. Say, you won't go. You are going to declare by the hand of the one who set up the universe. Who dictate time and season. Now, I declare speed by the spirit of God. Speed takes over all that concerns my life. Speed of God. Somebody prophesy. Somebody prophesy. Speed in accomplishment. Speed. Speed. By the Spirit of the Lord. I receive speed. I receive speed. In my academic life, I receive speed. In my career life, I receive speed. Speed in my study. Speed in my business. Speed of growth. Speed of promotion. Speed of multiplication. Rakatalaba. Speed in getting married. Married. Speed. Speed by the hand of God. Not by power. Not by might. But by my spirit. Share the Lord. Not by power. Not by might. But by my spirit. Share the Lord. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. See the Lord. Speed by the spirit of the Lord. Thank you, Daddy. You are lifted up. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now, by your prophetic pronouncement today, I declare miracles unspeakable. I declare testimony unusual. In the name of Jesus, I can see everything. Lie me, lie I can see everything. you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit from today you will demonstrate God's might anywhere you are found I declare miracle everywhere when you turn to the right you will see miracle on the left miracle will happen as you move forward you will experience the miraculous in the name of Jesus thank you Father it is done for you in Jesus name can you be seated mommy please give me two minutes sorry sorry man sorry praise the Lord so you must go in that might how should you go everybody go in this might 
wake up and begin to prophesy. Sometimes you write what you want to prophesy down and you begin to read it out. It's as serious as that. You write it and you begin to speak it. You construct them and you speak them. Put the word of God here, put it in here, put it in here and you begin to read it to the heavens, read it to the angels. It is time for the miraculous. You will not miss your home. I say you will not miss your home in the name of Jesus. Some night this week, the Lord woke me up. I was reading a book by Young Cho. When I was reading it, I felt a leading. I have found that we are praying for Nigeria. Are you with me? We put it in our night vigil. We put it in some weekly prayer. But God wants consistent intercession and interdenominational platform race to pray for Nigeria. People are already telling us our prayer is useless. And we must tell them our prayer is relevant. Amen. Amen. So, I am being led to start what I call interdenominational prayer service for the nation. Interdenominational prayer service for the nation. Don't, don't walk up yourself. Don't lose your sleep. Just look at the model. It is going to be taking place now until we see the hand of God in Nigeria. Every Sunday evening by 5 p.m. It is not for everybody. It is for those who believe God is calling them to that altar. You leave the church, you go home, you go and sleep. Five, we are here. And if you can't join us here, I will ask them to put it at life. That you can join us on your bed. And we'll be praying for the nation. It will be a service for Nigeria. And we are dedicating it to tell God, you must show up in I don't have gun to shoot. I can't talk to them in answer of they won't listen to me. Before I get there, they will even stop me. Who is calling you there? But I have a, a palace I can enter without, without hindrance. That's the palace of the Almighty. Are you with me? So I, I, I call it interdenominational prayer service for what? For the nation. And it will be one and a half hours of all intercession. If we want to lie down, we will lie down before God and be saying, Daddy, you created Nigeria. Do something about Nigeria. If you want God to kill somebody in Nigeria, we will tell him who has the power of life and what? And death to kill the person. It's a I'm raising that for you to know how serious what I'm talking about. It is starting today. I am ready to pray that prayer alone today. Are you with me? I will be there alone. I will sit on this altar alone tonight, 5 p.m. You will meet me here if you want to come. So, but I must give you the privilege of the information. And very soon, all our graphics, they will help me put it together. I will send it to all platform that there is an interdenominational prayer service for the nation in Jesus Center, 5 p.m. every Sunday. Our job there is just pray. For, we want them to know that there is somebody who owns Nigeria and that is the God Almighty and he can do anything with Nigeria may the Lord help us in Jesus name that is my special information you are blessed in Jesus name